All right, so we're going to do a different problem here today where we have two fulcrums instead of just one. So if you guys uh, have 722 out, this is number two that I'm going to be working here for you. All right, we've got a balance beam with fulcrum one and two. And we have a mass located that has a mass of eight kilograms and the beam is going to have a mass of 16 kilograms. Okay, so we've got the different points A, B, and C listed out here. A has a length of 10 centimeters, B at 15 centimeters, and C at 70 centimeters. And then we have 1.4 meters is the beam length. Okay, so as I talked about today in class, uh, we want to be able to first of all label and know where all of the forces that are going to be acting on this beam are going to be at. So if we put these in here, we've got our mg for this mass, so we'll just call that mgm. The mass isn't quite located at the middle of this system, so we're going to put our mg for the beam. And then, since we have two fulcrums, we're going to have an upward force here, we'll just call this F2, and an upward force here, this is F1. I don't know the magnitudes of them, so I'm not going to worry about uh, messing with the lengths of those two forces. So since the system's in static equilibrium, both up and down, and rotationally, and we don't have either value for either one of the fulcrum forces, just like we talked about today, in order to solve for one of these, since I can solve for these two, but I can't solve for F1 and F2, since I have two unknowns, I've got to get rid of one of them. So the way we do that is to write a torque equation and to make one of the two forces our rotational axis. Since the problem is telling us to go ahead and solve for F2, and it really doesn't matter which one we pick, but it's going to be easier based off of the distance measurements and the lengths that are given. Since this is saying solve for F2, what we're going to do here is eliminate F1. We'll make this our rotational axis. And now this is just like having an applied force over here. Okay, so we can treat it as a fulcrum, or we can just take the fulcrum out of here and say, oh, okay, we're going to apply F2 upwards at that point and that is going to be one of our three forces that are left that's going to be generating torque. Okay, so now we have our three forces in here. We've got mass of the, of the mass, uh, force gravity of the beam, and then we have force two coined up. Okay, so let's set up our torque equation. This is going to be generating our counterclockwise torque. So we're going to say torque for F2. These two are going to generate clockwise rotation. So torque for the mass and torque for the beam. And remember, all of these are going to sum up to equal zero. So the next step of this is we need to get all of our radius measurements set. So we can go ahead and fill in our equation. So we're going to have force 2 times radius minus mgr for the mass minus mgr for the beam. And all of that's going to sum up to be equal zero. So let's start thinking about what these three R's are going to be, because this is usually the trickiest part of any of these problems, is to find that radius measurement for each one of the forces. Since we're establishing this as our fulcrum, our radius measurements are from there to there, here to here, and the distance between the two fulcrums. So that's where the three R's are going to be that's going to go in each one of these. Okay. Probably the easiest one to figure out is going to be to the mass because that one is given. So this arrow here is exactly equal to what this distance B is. So this 0.15 is going to be the radius for the mass. Okay. This distance from here to here is the sum of B and C. So I can just add these together. So that's easy. That's going to be 0.85 that we're going to set up for the radius of that. So that'll give us the radius for the fulcrum. Okay, sum for the radius of the beam tends to be the hardest one. I gave you guys this recipe in class. Take the length of the beam minus two, or divided by two, and then subtract whatever overhangs from the other side. So this is the overhang here on A. So since I know the length of the beam, so the radius of the beam is simply 1.4 over 2, which is going to give me 0.7. And then I'm going to subtract this 0.1 from it. 
So this is going to give me my distance between the center of mass of the beam and this fulcrum, okay? And obviously this is 0 0.6 meters. Okay, so now it's time to just to plug in the numbers. So force 2 times the radius, which is 0.85, minus LGR of the mass, so we've got 8 times 9.8, times my radius. Remember, we said the mass radius is just me here. So 0.15 minus MGR, so 9.8 times our 0.6 with the beam, and we set that all equal to zero. Okay, so obviously we only have one value that's left in this equation to solve for, so F2 is 124 newtons. If I round that to two sig figs, we can have 120. It depends on whether we want to leave it there. So let's go ahead and solve for that. Newtons, 120 newtons. Okay, so now I know the value of this force. Okay, so the next thing I can do is put the fulcrum back in here. Now I could go through the long, tedious process of repeating all of this again and solving for F1. So I could now set my fulcrum over here but now I'm going to have to turn right back around, and obviously I know this distance, but I'm going to have to find the distance here and the distance here, and that just takes too long to do. Since I know three of the four total forces now that are acting on this beam, I can go ahead and switch gears and solve using a net force equation. Okay, so. Now I have our two forces up, force fulcrum one and force fulcrum two. Okay, so those are my two upward arrows. Minus mg for the mass, minus mg for the beam, and all of this sums up to equal zero. Okay, so the two forces up minus the two forces down are going to be balanced. Okay, so once I plug those in and solve for F1, F1 plus, and I've already got this answer written in, so I'm going to stick with it, 124 newtons minus mg of the beam, or of the mass, sorry, 8 times 9.8, minus the beam, 16 times 9.8, equals 0. Okay, once again, this is a lot easier to do than setting up a torque equation. These take a little bit longer because you've got to think about all of the radii and all the masses and so on, and, and this is a lot easier because all we have to do is just think about straight up and down. Okay, if I stick with three sig figs like I was using in the problem before, this equals 111 newtons. So now I know the two forces upwards, okay? And if you look at the picture, it kind of makes sense that you've got more of the beam over here pushing down onto F2, so that means that more force is going to be pushing back up. So F2 is going to be greater than what F1 is. But the overall sum of all of them equals zero when we add up all the forces. Okay, hope that helps.